Hey, what's up? John Beaupre, aka Casino Crime here. Thank you again for joining my weekly PLO strategy content video where I give you something actionable that you can use in your next session to make money right away. All right, so today we're gonna talk about a fun topic. It's blocker bluffing, which PLO is kind of legendary for, right? Uh, a lot of fuss has been made about using the nut, nut blocker. I actually even know of a website dedicated, dedicated completely to using nut blockers, which some of you may have visited before, uh, and which I actually post some articles on as well. Um, now, uh, today we're going to talk about when you should know or when you should follow through and pull the trigger on a blocker bluff. And of course, also when it's kind of a terrible play to execute a blocker bluff. So the three things that I'm going to talk about today are pot equity, whether we have the nut blocker and opponent type. All right, now, basically whenever I'm executing a blocker bluff, these are the three uh, components of a blocker bluff that I take into consideration. Now, I'm gonna start off with a story, uh, one uh, that's about Daniel Coleman, which if you don't know who Daniel Coleman is, he had an incredible uh, year recently where he won like $20 million playing super high rollers all over the world and basically just destroyed the poker world, okay? Um, and one afternoon I had the opportunity to watch him play the final table of the 5K super high roller down in Florida. And uh, I watched it, you know, from wire to wire. And uh, from watching him play, I learned a few things, right? Well, number one being everybody kind of has this idea of professional poker players being these ultra aggro dudes um, who are constantly applying pressure, spewing around chips, making a lot of fancy bluffs. And what I found after watching Daniel Coleman was that he incorporated these same uh, ideas into his play, where I never really saw Daniel Coleman get completely out of line when he had nothing. Whenever he really applied pressure, he had at least one, if not two, of these components in whenever he was pulling a bluff, all right? So let's go through them real quick, all right? So the first item is, of course, pot equity. Now, um, it's rare where you see good players, and in general, it's rare when a bluff is good when you have complete no equity in the pot. Um, you know, suicide bluffs are fun to turn over. They're great for live poker. They're great for the action. Everybody gets wound up about them. But in practice, if you have no pot equity, if you're just completely drawing dead against your opponent's range, um, your bluff really decreases a lot. Now, on the other hand, if you actually have some pot equity, you know, if you have a nut flush blocker with a set, well, of course, the profitability of your bluff um, goes up a ton in terms of uh, expected value. You know, not only do you win the pot because you know that your opponent doesn't have the nuts, all right, and of course, the second component of executing a blocker bluff is the nut blocker. Surprise, surprise. Uh, but you need to be able to identify whether you actually have the nut blocker. There's a big difference uh, if, let's say, you have pocket queens on jack 10-9 and compared to when you have the ace of spades on queen four deuce monotone, right? So I see this commonly where players will be going balls to the wall trying to get their opponent to fold uh, a straight on jack 10-9 with pocket queens, um, or maybe they have pocket queens, but what they don't understand is that although the likelihood of their opponent having the nut straight is reduced, that doesn't mean they can't have the straight, right? So um, that's a pretty common uh, newbie error. Now. Uh, we'll talk more about, in a future video, about all kinds of different block blockers, right? When you first start playing PLO, when people think of nut blocker, they think of the ace of spades on a queen four deuce all spade board. But there's all kinds of different blockers in PLO, right? Um, on an eight seven seven, if you have an eight, that's a blocker to a full house. Um, you can have blockers to draws. Let's say that um, the flop is eight seven or like eight six three if you have pocket sevens you have a blocker to seven nine so there's a variety of different ways to use card removal with your cards that we'll go through in a future video um, but for now we're just talking about nut blocker situation so the second is you have to be looking or make sure that you actually have a blocker to the absolute nuts it really changes the line that you take and it takes how your opponents will perceive your betting the third one is opponent type right now one of the first tips i ever got in poker, and I'm sure you guys got the same, was don't bluff calling stations, right? Now, it's not completely true. There's definitely situations where you want to be bluffing call stations. You want to apply pressure where people have wide ranges. Um, but in general, uh, 
against people who really aren't in the business of folding, which we've all seen those types of players. Some people just really aren't going to fold. So you need to be able to gauge, um, you know, is this guy a folder? Uh, you know, are, a big important one is stack size. Are we too short to make someone fold? For all you guys that are coming in and half stacking or even coming in for 20 big blinds in the cash games, like do you even have enough to make someone fold a clear flush? Um, you know, in general, I try to not attempt blocker bluffs when I'm short. I mean, one of my golden rules of PLO and poker in general is I'm not really in the business of making people fold big hands, right? Where the profit in poker comes from is not from trying to make people fold big hands. It's looking for situations where they have weak, medium strength hands or just air. So for the most part, um, I'm not going to try to make people fold the second nuts if I, know, if, the, if I know they have the second nuts, and particularly if I don't have the image for it. Now, um, you need to pay close attention to your image. Did, um, are you clearly steaming? Did you just uh, get busted trying to execute a couple of bluffs? Um, these are the kind of things that you need to consider when executing a block or bluff, or really any bluff in general. And that's what these are all meant actually to um, help you realize is that this is not all just for blockers, right? This is for any bluff. Um, so when I'm thinking of executing a bluff or when I'm thinking of executing a block or bluff in particular, these are the three things that I look at. And when I have two of these th two of these three components in the bag, I pretty much just close my eyes and know that my blocker bluff or my bluff is plus EV. Now, when I have only one of these things, let's say I have like a good hand to semi bluff with, or I have just the nut blocker, but I don't really have an opponent read, or and like nothing else besides my nut blocker, like you know, no set, no pair, nothing like that. Um, that's when things be start to become more thin, and that's when uh, the poker playing part of my brain kind of kicks in and uh, sways me one direction or the other. But again, the most important thing to realize is if you have two of these components out of the three, you're, you're almost always making a plus EV bluff in the wrong, long run, so you can just kind of push your money into the middle. Um, but with only one of these, it's gonna be thinner. If you have none of these, if you have no nut blocker, no pot equity, and you have no reads on your opponent, well, you shouldn't bluff. So, um, and the other thing that's kind of nice about the, knowing these three components, it'll keep you, um, you know, it'll keep you from bluffing all the time, it'll keep your frequencies in line, and it'll help you build a good balanced uh, table image, it'll help you build out your frequencies correctly so that people will give you respect when you want to, um, when you want to uh, give you respect when you want to execute a bluff, uh, but it'll also keep you bluffing at a good, uh, at a good rate so that people still pay you off when you have good hands. So as always, thank you for checking out the video. I love doing these videos for you guys and I do these topics or I pick these topics and do these videos based off of your feedback both in the comment section and by emailing me. So I'd appreciate it if you did that now. Feel free to email me anytime uh, at casinocrime, K-A-S-I-N-O-K-R-I-M-E at PLOquickpro.com or right in the comment section here. I read them all and I look forward to hearing from you. Good luck guys, take care.